and welcome live from Karchak Studio here in Essen, Germany. Welcome to another live stream here on Monday evening at 8 o'clock German time, uh, 11 o'clock, whatever time you are living in, you know where you live. We are worldwide. Yes, and if, you haven't, and if you are not here in live, then welcome to the recording of this YouTube live stream. Next time, hopefully, you will be with us live. Today we have a great guest, uh, Fernando Figueras from Spain, Madrid, uh, the um, person who is um, organizing the Campus Magico Academy and who already did several Campus Magico events. And uh, today, before we start, actually we start first with the trailer and then we go into this. Exactly. Okay? Let's do the trailer. And worldwide is the best uh, starting point because yeah. worldwide. Uh... <laughs> this one and the other one as well, right? I mean, it's really strange. <laughs> Guys, uh, we have waited so long. Wow. Um, let, let's start with the first one. Uh, since Black Friday, we ran into one uh, severe problem that is very un, uh, unusual for Phoenix and for Karchak. We ran out of standard index Phoenix decks. We did not have them anymore in red, we didn't have them anymore in blue. And so um, yes, and while USPC is preparing our next print run, um, I did a COVID-19 special edition. That's this one. So no, no. if you yes, go for the top camera. If you are into Let me go <laughs> yes, go if, if you are into a collector's deck or whatever, this is Taiwanese great quality. And it says COVID-19 edition, so that you know it's a really rare uh, run this time. I uh, well, I. Um, <clears throat> Did a little joke. You can imagine we have these uh, the the logo here of the Phoenix bird, and it says, "Let me show this F U 2020." Um, and last but not least, we have here the special one: stay safe, stay healthy, stay f stay magical. So this edition is now available oh, for us again. Yes. So this one here is available. Um, I will open it up on our website again. Is there a special uh, special pricing? Uh, no, no special pricing, but a special button for do the COVID edition and. Um, I will edit this. Yeah. Uh, so it will so be later sense. tonight. Uh, I will add this so that finally the Sun Index Phoenix deck is available. The the other ones from USPC should be available again around beginning of and March. The quality, because we speak before about uh, the, ta the the quality of uh, the Taiwan Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan so. quality, and it's amazing how good they are. So I told you. There is a difference you. between the US playing card and and this one, but only a different uh, difference um, between the feelings when you feel it. But yeah, the, the spread and all this is nice. Wow. Um, okay, the only the only difference, and um, this is something well we have to live with. It is that the um, that the cut is from the other side. So the pharaohs, if you are more into table pharaohs, then jump onto <laughs> these decks because there are the pharaohs are this time not going from the backs to the faces, but from the faces to, to the, the backs back. easier than normal. Yeah. Um, but that's that's one project, and the other one is finally they're almost finally there. Um, well, you have seen already this uh, super edition here, maybe in the in the former streams. However, now we have all the items in the yes. house besides of one seal and uh, these special seals that I have here are on a pallet and this pallet is going back and forth back and forth <laughs> through whole Europe uh, we have about 50 trackings of this pallet it just doesn't want to arrive in Germany good news is it is already through customs from there it left again from our neighbor city going back to the south of Germany and hopefully uh, to Belgium this morning, also it goes back. Back several times <laughs> several times so uh, once we have it we can publish it and um, if you ever let me do this um, first of all, you can ask certainly questions not only for this items or for any other topics, um, but also regarding uh, Fernando. Um, in a second, if you go to slash live you can ask any questions that we will approach and answer later on. However, if you are, is it there? Yes, we are talking about this box. <laughs> okay, uh, it's not what I wanted to say, but anyhow, uh, let's do this with us together because then the green is not screen uh, is not cut out. Uh, that's a little bit of a problem because our green screen doesn't work uh, together with the box here. Now, what you find inside here is this great collector's box. 
3D. Mm, yes, that is uh, completely in 3D as you can see, but also it has nice color changes from all the colors that are included inside the pack. That is black and purple and green and orange. And also those stars, the little details. Yeah, the little details. In. And finally, inside, well, not on this case, but after doing a magic spell, then certainly <laughs> these are now in there as well. And finally, we have the stars uh, hidden here as well, and it really, really looks nicely that they are flickering and giving you a nice 3D uh, um, design. Last but not least, these decks have a special card case that is, uh, have the colors on the inside. They will be numbered uh, as it is a limited edition. Only 500 of these sets will ever be produced. So everything is handmade, actually. And yes, the only thing that is yeah. missing is the, is the seal in the corner uh, on, on the back of the card case. This will be available um, in the next two days, I would expect. And if you have, and here's the button, let's see. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> um, yeah. It's for um, uh, leaving, um, yeah, signing up. Come on. Uh, ring the bell as well so that you get notified once we are publishing the YouTube video here that this great product will be available finally. Thank you so much. It's for you. Now the cool thing is, <laughs> and it will not fit there, okay, it will not fit. That's yes. for you. Yes. So here's the thing. Um, this is uh, so far our part. I will now connect to Fernando Figueras. Um, and I go to the chat and um, yes, yeah, he will background. answer. Yes, he will answer the questions. If you have any any uh, things in the in the chat in the live chat, if you want to, I will not read it. Philo will answer it. We have also our, our moderators there. Thank you for for all the moderators. Um, and certainly, as you know, uh, let see me you see. Later. Yes. Yes, oh God. Yeah, and, and here I'm seeing another question, for instance, uh, that you can leave at uh, carchark.de slash live. Uh, for instance, the first question, is there any chance you'll ever go live with Greg Rostami? Sure, there is a chance that we'll go live with Greg Rostami. I just have to reach out to him and we will uh, make it happen. It will not be in the next few weeks, but I'm sure we can um, organize this. Um, but now let me put in the earplugs, otherwise uh, there will be a really bad echo. And let's see if Fernando is uh, here. And uh, Fernando, you are here live with us. <laughs> Smoking a <Hello>. cigarette. <laughs> hello, time. hello, hello. How are you doing? Thanks for giving me the two minutes notice. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, uh, how is the weather right now in Madrid? Is there still snow or is it all gone? The snow lasted for one week and now it's completely melted. No oh, it is snow. already gone? Oh God. Let me, let me do something here. Uh, I have to go into a closer one. Let me see. I, I just get a feedback here that we have a good audio. That is great. So we have no doubles, echoes whatsoever because I have the earplugs in. Sorry. It only lasted how long? I'm with you, Fernando, again. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had, had some problems here with the settings. Um, yeah, we just uh, got our snow in here, so it must have been that the uh, whole weather moved up to uh, Germany now. Well so, done. fucking cold. Uh, anyhow, um, we have a great topic today. Let me, uh, uh, um, well, will this be kind of a topic that you will also use in the Magic Academy, in the Campus Magico Academy? Some of them, yeah, it's like, uh, as you know, I don't like telling people what to do. How do I know? It's like, I'm more into asking questions and provoking new thoughts. And with this, uh, when everything is not fixed anymore, we, when we put the pieces of the puzzle aside again, we can yeah. start building something new. That is true, yeah. So it's more, um, yeah, opening up uh, a window, let them look outside and see what possibilities are there without leading them the way, but giving them ideas in which directions they could look. That was always my idea in Campus Magico, that is one week. It was like more opening windows or opening doors. But now that is a six month project, I will open these doors, you will choose, and I will work with you for a few steps. Yes. So it's not leaving you on your own, but guiding the process, but according to what you need or what you want. Yeah, I, I, I sent out a newsletter about a week ago, I think, uh, how was the uh, the reaction so far? Did you get uh, some some requests and? 
It's like uh, since you sent the newsletter, uh, <laughs> things were exploded again. Uh, the first group is already full. We cannot ac accept any more students in the first group. So That's we have awesome. opened a second group. It's like uh, they will work in parallel. And we will be accepting more people for the, this week and the next. And then it's closed and we will work with whatever we have. We don't that want to cool. keep accepting people we, because we require a quality level from our part. So we cannot make it too big. Okay, what, what will be the group size that you look for best? Or what would be the maximum that you would put people in, in a group? The, fir the first group is already closed with 15 people. Nice. And the, the second group will start two weeks after the first one. So they will go in parallel, but we yes. will have time to keep providing the best service to everyone. That's very, very cool, yes. Um, awesome. Um, so I think you are doing kind of a Zoom call with every student who wants to apply or who wants to find out um, if he wants to sign up or not? Yeah, it's like a, I will not be accepting people just for the sake of getting more customers. I, it's an expensive project and it's a very, you have to be committed to this. So I, I cannot accept everybody who says, hey, yeah, that sounds, uh, looks cool. I prefer that he knows me, I know him, we know that we are in the same wavelength, wavelength and then we can agree to work together. That's so awesome. It's, it's not just selling products, that is fine for some, certain stuff, but this is something for you, so I need to know you. Um, and if you, um, um, so, so some of the people signed up but uh, have not yet um, subscribed to the full service, they have about a week uh, to go to do this? Yeah, it's like um, until the 7th of February we will be having uh, hosting Zoom calls, like one-to-one -one Zoom calls, so we can uh, discuss in length what they need, what they want, what they expect and what we require. So, and, it, and it's uh, super nice. So far, this last week, I had uh, 10, 10 calls with 10 different guys, almost one hour each. And we were discussing what they are really looking for, what they miss uh, in Magic and what they will, would like to, to find. Indeed, to two guys, I told them, this is not the program for you. And maybe you should go here and here. So I prefer people getting what they really need that, than just selling products to someone that they will not... Uh, Profit from it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, I, I can fully agree with that. And then sooner or later, maybe uh, in, a, in a second step or next year, or maybe just the campus itself uh, later, hopefully this year when the lockdown is over, fingers crossed, um, that uh, then uh, this might be the right solution for them. Um, yeah, it will be definitely something totally different to what Car Shark is offering because we are trying to provide. Um, magic for um, hobby magicians, amateur magicians who are uh, who would like to get easy to do card tricks or easy to do magic that still has a very high impact on mm -hmm. spectators so that they can focus on the presentation. Um, what, what then kind of opens up the possibilities where you would then reach in and see what other presentations would be possible? Because just a card trick can be performed in so many different ways. Yep. Yeah. And, and I think a good example, for instance, would be, um, let's say, yeah, what is a, a masterpiece itself by the construction, etc., is uh, the, Tommy, the, the Tommy Wonders Tame Card, what is a great thinking, um, where the, the story that, that intrigues you immediately as soon as, they, as, as his watch be, uh, uh, starts to beep, uh, you are you are in in his world. What is happening then? So oh, the team car is a is a curious example. It's not so easy. It's, I I've spent more time thinking of the routine than practicing the routine. Uh, well, first I don't agree that, that your products are only for hobbyists or amateurs. Uh, I know Thank many you. professionals that use your products. That is true. Yes, yes, and yes. They, and they will adapt it to their own needs. Uh, I have seen like triple coincidence or out of sight performing so many different ways by different uh, magicians, so you are providing tools. Yes, uh, providing yes, tools and I remember... Uh, sometimes I, with an instruction yes. set or with a guideline or um, sometimes it's a black box, like, hey, this is what you get, but then it's super funny to break this proposal that you give and creating something new. Yeah, I, I remember that when you are performing the triple coincidence routine in the theater, uh, at that time I was not able to understand your Spanish at the, uh, and and... 
I was just watching you and the reaction to the audience what was amazing what I mean I performed it for several years but your handling of the or your your plot that I that I saw that, that I complete did, that I did not understand at that time was mm -hmm. really intriguing because it really pulled the people in and, and the re revelation of each card was kind of a, yeah great great construction yeah so in this case I, I work more with the not with the plot or with the technique, but, but with the structure, the delivery of information. It's like we understand the different layers of information you are providing. Yeah. Then breaking them is easier. And now you can put elements in different ways to maximize the, the understanding or the, or the message or whatever it is. In this case, not much message. I use triple coincidence to, as Tamari says, breaking the shell of adulthood. So then they are open for accepting any fiction you propose. So in this case, I was looking to maximize uh, impact, as you say. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking of the words of, of Juan when, uh, even if it's fiction, you have to bring in a lot of reality because people would, would uh, just sense what is real and what is not real. And if you want to construct something totally out of the blue that does not even come close to reality, it, I think it won't work. Or how do you see that? Wow, this is super complex because it depends. <laughs> yes. Yeah, one way of uh, introducing fiction is starting from reality and then starting to change little by little the, the conditions. And suddenly you are in a different world or even proposal. But we can start... I mean, it, it depends if you are thinking of a magic trick or a magic routine as a painting where it's just the beauty of the impact itself, what you are looking for this image, this photograph, or if you are working like a storyteller. So this story has a narrative structure. And then there are certain rules that you can break, but understanding them, they will become the tools. If you, are, if you want to paint a picture that is a painting that is just beautiful for the sake of beauty, then you don't need the narrative tools, of course, because you are trying to impact visually. And then you have to follow other rules or other guidelines. But if you want to set a narrative structure, then there are different guidelines you have to follow. Yeah. What, what about, do, do you have an, maybe an example for the new rules that you would set up? Is there a performance that people would know that they could watch or where you would uh, give some examples? Yeah, it's like um, what you said before about uh, Tamaris and having the reality and the fiction and somehow interlaced is what is called, or could be called, metagaming, or metaplot. You are reading a book, but you know it's a book, uh, and you still have to accept the rule of turning pages. So this is a rule of reality that is a limitation of the fiction. Uh, if you want to watch a movie, you have to go to the cinema in the old times. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then it comes the willing suspension of disbelief and all these things. Yeah, it's like we are in magic. We have always we always say about looking for the conflict, but in magic the conflict is always there. How did you do it? You are proposing something impossible that we know is possible, so you know you are cheating us in order to create this. This is a level. Another level is what you are proposing, so you are working in a meta level. If something that you say interrupts the flow, could be done very gently, like René Lavand. He was showing you the hand empty, but it didn't feel like a challenge. Sometimes he was like, I don't even understand myself when he was pushing the cup with the balls. Like, and even with my hand, I don't take anything with me, but still three balls here, boom. It's not going back to reality saying, hey, look, and I am taking nothing. It's beautifully interlaced with uh, the proposal. So yeah. then the metagaming is still there, but it's playing together. In the same car, as you said before, with uh, Tommy Wonder, it's a narrative story. It has different acts, and you start... What is called the hook in, in a book, in a movie, is the hook. The hook is not about the story, maybe. It's something that talks from the writer to the reader or the spectator. I'm trying to get the spectator involved. It's not about the character, it's not about the story and the conflict. It's, no, no. You are going to be sitting here with your eyes like here, this. So he, his hook is proposing he has a collection. This awakes curiosity and you are like, okay, what's going on? And then is the 
the incident. The incident is getting the car wrong. So okay. This moment is what is not a call to adventure yet, but it's something that is happening that breaks the flow and you have to react to it, to this. It's called the inciting incident. So in this case, it's, oh, I got it wrong. Uh, the car is not the one I chose. So you try to fix it and it doesn't work. So this is the conflict. You have to do something beautifully so far. But here I don't like because Tommy Wonder too quickly finds the solution to the conflict. Oh, but just, uh, we are just the changing now the, everything the to the other. Around. So, okay, I will change my whole collection. So is this aha moment that usually is at the end of the th third act or end of the second act. In his case, it's just, oh, it's not working. Oh, problem. Okay, I will change the whole collection. No problem. So suddenly he's creating something very big to keep it like this because now is the moment for magic. Now watch and shut up. Now the, now the story is not so important anymore. It's about the visual effect. So I yeah. think he plays it very well, but it, eh, I'm not saying. Just saying. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, let's say what I really like is, um, well, he's trying two or three times and the whole structure of the, of the performance is uh, uh, in a way that, um, yeah, okay, maybe it was too early, but what else would you have suggested then? I don't know. I think, it's, I think he plays very cleverly because what it could be lame in a story and it could be very difficult to maintain in this magic trick, then he changes. The story is not important anymore. It was just an excuse. It becomes like a MacGuffin in order for you to watch how the cars transform. So it was yeah. just like a, an introduction story, a whole structured introduction. But what now it is, about, it, is, what it, it is. becomes now like a painting again. Yes. To watch the beauty of these things happening. Yeah, and with the outside impact of, of having an alarm going off, uh, it, it brings you into the next routine without saying, oh, and now I do another trick. It's just something, oh, uh, sorry for the interruption, something happens here right now at this specific time, let's do something. It's going back to the normal world. Is In Mickey Mouse, when he is learning how to be a wizard, the apprentice, is when everything is in the total chaos, now the big magician comes and stops the water. So something breaks or it's a nightmare and you wake up from the nightmare. Whatever it is that takes you out again from the magic wall that you have proposed. I get it, I get it. L yeah, uh, let me try something here to uh, see if there are any requests so far uh, on the live chat on, well, live chat I don't see here. That would be something that Philo does. However, if you have any other questions regarding uh, your presentation about uh, your plot that you would love to, into, uh, to, to use or if you want to get any inspirations, let us know. Just leave a comment on cardshark.de slash live and we are happy to uh, um, go deeper into this topic. Now, okay, so far. Um, I have here different performers from circus to standalone disciplines. Where do we come from? What is, what is this topic about? I mean, you mean? When, 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 you, when you say, uh, uh, when, when it's about clowns and magicians and strongmen, I mean, this is all sideshow, right? Mm -hmm. this, um, do magicians, if they only have a, um, a, let's say, a performance span of 10 minutes, do they have the time to establish a whole story? Yeah. No, uh, and you, I think you shouldn't, or you don't need to. Um, and it depends. I mean, it's like pro professional magician has so many different interpretations regarding your market. And this is the usual uh, conflict. It's like if you ha hire a painter, you are not hiring a painter. What kind of painter? You need a portrait or you need this wall painted in white. So it's different professions. So they are not, they are not discuss uh, to each other about art or things because he's not trying to express himself. He's just trying to provide a service. You need this wall to be white. I am the best doing it or I'm not so good. And that's why I'm cheaper. And if you want a portrait, then you don't go for quality, you go for personality. Hmm, I want this impressionism, I want this abstract, I want this realist. 
So it's like, in magic is everything together and everything, everybody has an opinion on art and how it should be performed. How do I know? I mean, just in Campus Academy, we'll be having people from Germany and Philippines, different cultures. How can you give a, an answer for them? And that's one of the, th magicians were always late in all the vanguards of the 20th century. But we were the first to jump into postmodernism. It's empty, it's global, it's subjective. That's why people from Philippines, China, Argentina, and USA are doing out of sight the same way, talking about blind people, do 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 do. Suddenly there are no cultures, there are the cultures, there are no big stories. It's just one global thing, therefore empty of content, because you cannot relate because it's the only one. So I, 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 I can agree on this. When I did my very, very first lecture tour to Japan, and that was in the early days before the Phoenix deck was, um, was released. So that was 2008, I think I went there. And at that time, you might remember that I did a lot of vintage effects with mm -hmm. the tarot deck and the, med uh, the, the um, old style uh, poker deck, etc., etc. So I tried to do something very special for the Japanese magicians so that it would not just be a poker deck that Japanese are not used to. And I, and I read books about uh, the history of playing cards, etc. And Asia was part of it and Japan was especially part of it. And there is a deck that is usually uh, was used by, um, by women, what was called the uh, 1000 Poems. Uh, where there are nice uh, um, yeah, poems on each card, etc. And they would play this game. And there's another game with uh, nice pictures of, of birds and so on and so on. So I, I had the idea that I would do uh, the corner of Piccadilly, what is kind of a Monty yeah. effect, mm -hmm. and, and apply this to the, uh, to the art of Jap Japan. And, uh, and I printed everything and I went there to this uh, lecture and I sold, I think one, I think I sold only one because yeah. what I didn't understand at that time, because I was totally new to Japan, they don't have a history of, of, uh, of, of any, any um, Monty. They, they don't have any street performers or people who would ever try to get money from you on a game that is played on a street with, with cards or coins or whatsoever. It doesn't exist. And therefore, the story I was thinking of uh, that shouldn't be universal, that should have been Japanese, was so far from not being Japanese <laughs> that it just didn't work. So I learned my lesson very early back then, yeah. And yeah, you're right. Yeah. What you said is super interesting because it, it relates to one of the topics also in campus. Uh -huh. That is, it's regarding semiotics. This is what is called a floating significant. It means there are things that they have a a meaning, a symbol, already in the element. Like uh, the heirloom or the tarot cards, they already bring a story with them. Absolutely, but yes. Mm -hmm. but some elements are floating significance, it means they are void of meaning. Like in the beginning, Homer Simpson was a kind of either a rebel or a symbol of the decadent American culture family, but then it became an empty container for any kind of joke. Burger King could use Homer Simpson. Um, Megadeth could use Homer Simpson. I mean, it was empty. You could put anything. So the playing cards are becoming also floating containers. They have no meaning because they are not in the culture anymore. Maybe casino things and stuff. Therefore, it's either useless because they have no meaning itself or super useful because they can, you can put any meaning that you want in them. Yeah, but then sometimes you see uh, stories and constructs into playing cards, like now this is a village of whatever, and so on and so on, and that's this this is so uh, so far off. Then better don't do this uh, at all. Um, it's a yeah. different conversation, yeah. Yeah, that's totally different. I I, I still remember that. Uh, well, I card shark came from storytelling magic at the at the beginning. Uh, we only had packet tricks and and then the vintage uh, style cards with the gypsy curse and uh, and and corn of piccadilly and uh, ter uh, tarot gone wild etc and there were uh, with all these special cards for the tarot deck we had really bizarre 
uh, Magic and with Christian Shellham we had the uh, Paradise Lost uh, routine. Uh, it was all very dark and very uh, great routines and I hopeful, uh, I'm hopeful, I'm, I'm really hoping that this year we will bring them all back uh, when I reprint all the vintage cards again. Um, so I, I can see how important a good, good storyline, a good plot would be and it's the magic can add to a story or it's just the story can add something to the magic. I mean you, you had some very interesting postings recently on, on Instagram and the one that I really liked was the one with the, with the rules that, that needs to be set and then broken. And a good example was with the, with the gremlins. Um, everybody knows the gremlins. Uh, that you're not allowed to feed them after midnight and no water and what was the third one? Uh, I forgot. Bright light. Uh, what? Bright light. Oh yeah, 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 too bright light. But they would not turn into into the monsters with bright light. It's just uh, feeding them after midnight or or then multiplying with water certainly. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I uh, can totally relate to this. If you have rules that you then start breaking, then magic can happen. Um, uh, that that's really cool. Do you have any other example besides of the gremlins that you already posted there? Yeah, but this goes in the lines of um, if we take this movie like gremlins or whatever yeah. or this magic routine with the structure of a short tail it means you are very limited in the elements you can put because they will be too crowded. If the story lasts for three minutes mm -hmm. how many characters can you like Red Riding Hood Red Riding Hood in this story you have Red Riding Hood the wolf, the grandmother, the hunter, and the mother in the beginning that the mother is just take this basket. Yeah, 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 go go for and yeah, bring the food. Yes, yes. And we don't know what kind of mother it is. Is is tall, blonde, bold. The main characters, the grandmother is not there for long. <laughs> <That's not very laughs> no. Nope. And the hunter is just at the end to save the day. So basically, it's just Red Riding Hood and the wolf and how they relate, how they meet, what happens between them. So in a story, every element that we, that we put into play should be very well measured because we don't have time for focusing the attention. That's why it's, this is called a Chekhov gun because of Anton Chekhov. That if you put a rifle in the theater on stage for a theater play, it's because you are going to use it. If not, why do you put um, an element there? So yeah, indeed, it, it, uh, would, it would take a lot of distraction, yes. Uh, it yeah. would just, uh, yes, you would concentrate and when will you use it? And when it, when it never was used, then totally use it. Yeah, well, a distraction, not in the way of misdirection, not a way of... No, 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 I'm saying, but you're expecting this element to be used sooner or later. Mm -hmm. so and you're if you're, I mean, if you have a bag hanging from the, from the, from the ceiling in a, in a magic show, you are expecting that at a certain point there will be this bag taking a certain role in, in the magic. And if this Absolutely. would never happen, it's like, did he forget something maybe? <laughs> did he run like, out of time it, or what happened? Now is the moment for it. Now is the moment for it. Now is the <laughs> yeah, it would be totally distracting, yes. I, 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 and it is used uh, a lot in movies, like murder movies or mystery movies. It's called red herring. Red herring is put in an element in order to distract you. So you start thinking solutions that is not the real solution. So you don't get come to the real solution too early. But this is something for longer stories with longer plots. So yeah, following Chekhov gun concept, if we put a rule into play, like don't feed the gremlins, you just put them there to break them, to create conflict. If not, why is this big thing about not breaking? A good example is Ghostbusters. Don't cross the streams. Of course, what happens at the end? You have the to cross the streams. Is yeah. Crossing the streams. Yeah. The fun yeah. part is, I always wondered, isn't there always after midnight? I mean, when does after midnight stops? When is it safe again to feed them? <laughs> it is always. After midnight. <laughs> there is no right. I mean, when when is the next day? Mm. So I, this was the part I never really understood. Um, really weird. But, yeah. But they they played great because in the beginning, the all the Chinese monk. Tells the father the story, the, ru the rules. Then the father tells the family the rules. Then the son tells the friend the rules. So in the first five minutes, we have heard the rules five times. No need to repeat them in 90 minutes. <laughs> <But> <laughs> no. Magicians, we have 
significant rules. Uh, we know magicians don't reveal the tricks or we don't repeat the routines. So we already come with these uh, rules in the back. We don't need to explicitly uh, tell them in order to break them just before. The nice thing is in the beginning, they just think, almost forget, and then when they come back, they already join the point, link the points. You don't need to treat the spectators in a magic show like babies in diapers. Yeah, and that also is the, some of the, the stuff that you sometimes hear of a magician. Uh, this is an ordinary deck of cards. Uh, like, okay, show me the, the deck, but why would you ev even say that it's an ordinary deck? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's supposed to be an ordinary deck. And if the card is lost in the deck, I can impossibly know which card you are thinking of. Why are you even mentioning it? Because in a second you will show me exactly the card that, I, that, that was just lost in the deck and that I shouldn't know, but I know somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, so would you even mention it? It doesn't make s I mean, that there will be something like uh, if Red Riding... Uh, um, what? Red Riding? Riding. <laughs> Rot Käppchen in German language. If, 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 if she would, I mean, if she's asking with a, with a why are your, your paws so big or your hands so big and you're already expecting, okay, she has to say it because this is obvious uh, right now and you need the answer and why doesn't she see it that it's the wolf and not the grandmother? It's mm -hmm. the same like, okay, so here's an ordinary deck. Why don't you see and believe it's an ordinary deck? It's like playing a, like, a, uh, like, like telling a fairy tale that, is, that doesn't make too much sense. But it's, yeah, it's a good example that he gave. But what if we play with the composition of the information in Red Riding Hood? In the story, because it's for kids, the wolf goes to the house of the grandmother and he eats the grandmother. And we know that, and he puts the clothes of the grandmother. And now the, hap the thing happened with the, such big ears and stuff. But what if in a more adult or complex way, the wolf just goes to the grandmother's house? And the next image, is Red Riding Hood saying, oh, such big ears, such big feet. And suddenly the reader says, oh, fuck. The wolf has eaten the grandmother and he's posing. Is yeah, I get the idea, some yes. information, for, you know, but not, not too much. So they complete the puzzle in the minds and suddenly they are involved. I, I, I'm going to go to a, a, <laughs> a different place for a second. Sorry, yeah. Because it's like, I really think that magic are, is more related to video games than to theater. In, in the beginning, we had theater and magic. And now we had movies and video games. And I think movies relate to theater and video games relate to magic. Why? Because in video games, you are an active participant of the story. In a movie or in a theater play, you watch the story. Who is you, the magician or the spectator? The spectator. A spectator watches, watches a movie or watches a theater play. But in a video game and in a magic show, there is the illusion of choice. In a video game, you can decide to go this way or that way. You can decide to talk to the character or to kill him, to wait or to jump. Like in magic, in magic, we were creating centuries ago the illusion of choice where the Spectators were an active part of the play. Take a card. Maybe even if the spectator knows that you are going to force the card, it doesn't matter because at least they are an active part. In a video game, you can go through this door or this door, the small door or the golden door. Both of them lead to the dragon. It doesn't matter. You are choosing. Okay. You have it, this it... opportunity. That's why I think the Zoom online shows that we are doing right now should be more focused on this active participation rather than watch what I do. Because we have Netflix in the same device. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see that. I, I once had a discussion with, I think it was Christoph Bora, um, who um, had the discussion about um, um, a theater critique who was sitting in the audience and was um, ranting about that the magician would always need a spectator to be able to work, to perform, and that an opera singer, for instance, would not ask uh, an audience member to sing along with him. But that's what our art makes it so strong. 
so that it would be a participation because otherwise it would just be uh, like okay then it would be like a, a TV show of Copperfield or the um, Ehrlich Brothers or whatsoever but I think the beauty and the strength is if you are sitting in the audience and uh, yeah as you as, as you say yeah that's a good that's a good very good point I see that yes the difference is Copperfield was not revealing the methods. Uh, like in, in a certain way he did, but I think I told you once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, and that's nice. I mean, it's not an advantage or a disadvantage. It's not that the magician needs. It's we can choose that. Maybe the opera singer cannot choose to sing along with the audience. Or he can break in the... or she can. Is it something that belongs to us? We can make it interactive and will make sense. It's not something that we put because we can make interactive theater if we break this rule and we play it this way but it is one of the main foundational features of magic so we should at least consider that this is one of the main things like uh, cinema was considered music using light or things like that okay it belongs only to, to movies it belongs only to comic books it belongs only to paintings it belongs only to magic magic then we can choose using it or not but is uh, inherent. Yeah, I, I get it. Okay, very interesting. Yes. So, um, which which parts wh when you when you go into the into the classes and give the structure, are you giving examples or how do these? Um, I mean, how would you implement these kind of storytelling or these these plots into into the into the the teaching in the classes? Into the teaching, right? Yeah, not not. I mean, not telling them. Do you have to do it? I mean, there's a, there's a very good example that the German magician, uh, the German magic at FISM, for many many years was telling kind of stories that there was the, whatever. Um, well, oh, yeah. several. You you know, right? I mean, there was uh, the the Stutt big Stuttgartian. Exactly the the Stuttgart school uh, where. Uh, a, a new talent was was found, and he had to tell. Uh, well, a certain story was gave, given to him, and he would have to perform this story. Um, so it wasn't really his choice, I guess, as far as I understood and 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 heard. Um, so when you when you give them the chances, how are you playing with this? How do they get um, 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 comfortable with? starting telling stories uh, implementing this kind of different presentation etc how how does that work i would never tell a story myself because i'm not the storyteller guy kind of guy but i can use the storytelling tools or structures in order to create what i do that is what i do in my case is very interactive is all the time a conversation provoking thoughts in the spectators so this is my style and it's not better or worse. But I can use the same tools. Because we will have many different students. I will not give the solutions of how to use it. Again, it's about making questions. I will put on the table, what if magic would be like a painting? Okay, a painter, depending on his intention, would use this or that or this or that. This usually happens. We can see these uh, trends or elements. What if it's a, like a play? What if it's like a conversation? What if it follows the same structures as a joke? Because many times magic routines uh, be, behave like a joke, not because it's funny, not because it's a sucker gag, but because it proposes something and it comes to a resolution and it's over. There is not a development of the character in a joke. You set a premise, you break it or you fulfill it or whatever. So. And that's the thing, every art has developed in the last 30 years like none in the whole history. We belong with the clowns in the circus, with the strong man, with the beard woman, and now we have clown theater that you can cry. Uh, many of those characters have been recycled in Cirque du Soleil and it's not just showing its only goal. Also, and I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? What was the last thing you said? Well, I, I was when when you when you uh, talked about this. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy started like we know in the late nineties, 
and suddenly they develop a whole structure of ideas, the callbacks, the premises. They were not new, but they were using it and they be, belong to this uh, field. We can use callbacks not only for the jokes. It's what we call planting ideas in a routine or in a movie. We place an element or an idea just very subtly. We forget about it and at the end, we take back this idea. And people say, oh, the element he proposed in the beginning. In magic, we usually are very straightforward. We present a conflict, we resolve it. We present an element, we use it. We present a premise, we fulfill it. So we should learn not to implement like equally, but to understand why they are using what they are using and then translating it into magic. That's what I'm proposing. I will propose many environments and we will play together how to translate that, not in, only into magic, but into your magic. Yeah, I, I just have to uh, to find the, the 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 way back when when you planted something in the beginning. I just uh, have to think of the performance of Jan Frisch uh, with the with the with the balls and the and the the Baltas is a routine with it where, where he has a, 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 a um, um, container for water and he's pouring water out and this water disappears so that other items can appear inside the balls the red balls but in the very last image of the of his of his uh, routine instead of uh, pouring out the ball the final time he splashes the water that was gone for all the time of the performance into his face and suddenly everything is back to the beginning and he's uh, he's ending with a wet face uh, with a wet body and that's it so it's a nice circle a conclusion to the, his old act uh, what really played out well otherwise he would not have been a FISM <laughs> champion <laughs> no it's, it's, and he's following this idea of um, the first time that the water is not there in a ball it's like Alice falling down the rabbit hole and when the water comes back it's like waking up from the nightmare we said or the ring in the Tommy Wonder thing so it's an uh, abrupt uh, exit from this magical world into back to into reality you come back to reality as a success, as a hero, or as a failure. That is what he's playing. So, okay, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I uh, see that. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Now we, we got a little bit, a little bit off topic. Um, or um, well, let's 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 get back to uh, one thing. Why I also got you here back. Uh, I would love to give uh, the, uh, the the spectators, the guys who are watching this live stream, one more time the chance to to join the campus, uh, the Ma uh, Magic Campus Academy, um, because it's the final time they can they can apply. And uh, otherwise, it would be next year or maybe second half of the year, or or never again. Who knows? I oh, come on. No, no, no. I'm, I'm very sure that, well, it's, it's, it's definitely a kind of a challenge because I, I, when you, when you already told me, uh, just now with the, with the, with the different, um, um, structures, etc. I, I saw in my inner mind the last evening when, uh, at the last campus Marico that I attended on the, on the terrace where every performer then at the end of the whole campus was then performing. And, and building a character in a very t five minute act whatsoever uh, or was a very, very beautiful piece and mostly really touching or funny or whatsoever. Um, that was a totally different level to what uh, we have seen at the beginning of every performer uh, um, attending the Campus Magico, what was really beautiful. I really hope that, um, and it, I think it's a challenge uh, that the Academy with the Zoom calls and all the distance learning, etc., will allow to achieve the same. And I guess it does. Otherwise, uh, it would not be already done for a year with all the Zoom calls around the globe. And um, yeah, I, I wish you best luck. Uh, is there anything that they uh, that the ones who are interested right now should do right now? It depends what everybody and each one uh, considers. I mean, we are still in the pandemic world, magic will change forever. The requirements, the professional requirements we'll need. I don't see walk around magic coming back to the market in the next few months. So either, I, as always, uh, freeze, flee or fight. Either you flee because you have to look for a different job or a different approach because you need to pay the bills. You freeze 
and at the end of the lockdown, after two years, you are still in the same point, only worse because then you are rusty. Or you fight and you find ways, whatever way it is, to keep yourself in the proper level and understanding what's going on around you because the world is changing. So. And I, I guess, guess, yeah, for me myself, at the beginning when I, <coughs> when, sorry, <coughs> at the beginning when uh, everybody was starting doing Zoom shows or whatever with uh, connected to Zoom, um, I was kind of, oh, is that really necessary, etc. So I was really at the edge and was refusing um, this going this way. But now I'm thinking that this is something that will stay even mm -hmm. after uh, the whole premise because I think people are used to coming together via video conferencing, etc. And I think we really right now have a big opportunity to allow ourselves to change with the times that we are in right now. And um, so I think that Zoom magic could be a very, very interesting topic as well by not just applying, uh, doing the same magic that we are used to just in front of a camera and seeing some other guys reacting on the other side of the camera, but using this kind of medium um, in a totally different way that we are allowed to drop things, to keep things out of the little view of the camera, etc. And even using black, ma black art and so on and so on. So methods that uh, are totally out of question when performing up close or even in a theater, then you have the problem that you are performing in big dif uh, distance. People could not see you very close. You cannot go back and forth by full view and then close up view on the table, etc. All this you are allowed to play with what is awesome. And if you are now taking action and, and study and try and perform and getting used to it, you are ahead of the game once we are opening up again. So I think there's a big chance in this as well. And it's, it's not about translating what you do into online. It's not exactly, guess, uh, but, but this is what this is what, what many many and magicians tried so far. Yeah. And I think that that is so so. Um, if you are just trying to do that, you are not going anywhere. It's it was already boring. <laughs> Life, imagine. <that. laughs> and now you do it on. Yeah, but then you are, can you the other one uh, could yeah switch off and and go into his uh, phone much earlier without annoying you too much. Mm. Um, yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of possibilities. I highly recommend uh, going to your website and uh, it's campusmagicalacademy.com. Mm -hmm. Let me try to show this one more time. Let's see if it works or not. Something should work. Let's see. Yes, here it is, campusmagicalacademy.com. And um, yeah, I can highly recommend it, sign up. Um, right now it uh, costs you nothing. It just allows you to get in touch with Fernando who will then uh, start a Zoom call with you so that you can both discuss if the, if the Academy would be something for you that it will bring you forward or not. Uh, as you have heard, uh, he would also refuse taking you if, if this is not a fit for you because he knows better than you what, uh, uh, what will be taught during the six months and what will you um, yeah, develop into. So I can highly recommend it, doing it. Fernando, thank you so much, first of all, that you joined me here. And uh, I hope to see you very, very soon, hopefully live then uh, in person, because I'm really missing Madrid. So um, stay tuned. I wish you all the luck with your academy and uh, we'll see us very soon. I hope. And I hope I didn't bore your spectators too much because I know uh, this is not for everybody. It's, it's a different topic. That certainly, it's not just doing tricks, etc. I think uh, this is also interesting to watch. And I hope um, the, that some of the spectators or the, some of our magicians, of the uh, people who are following us, enjoyed this talk that was de definitely different to the normal ones. And uh, we'll see us next Monday again. Fernando, until next time, bye bye. Take care.